Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to my channel where I like to make audiobooks of various web novels. In this particular series we will be focusing on The Forgotten Dungeon from the website Royal Road and in this particular video we will be doing chapters 1 through 5. I hope that you enjoy. Forgotten Dungeon Chapter 1 it was a day like any other, sitting down on the couch, playing some video games, getting supper ready. These kinds of mundane thoughts were on my mind today. It was Friday after all, and work was already done for the week. No overtime too. That's why the sudden surge of black colour caught him unaware. He only managed to feel a bit of pain as his slightly fat and pale figure collapsed on the floor. There was no time to scream for help or even react. In retrospect, living this type of life, alone, feeding on ready-to-eat meals, and without any exercise, may have been a mistake. Uh, yep. After all, it was death. Right here, and now, the remorse was overwhelming. Not. There was always a bit of apathy inside, the lack of ambition, as his boss and co-workers described it. He always answered resolutely that his priorities were simply different, and that it was true in a way. The specific strain of carpe diem, what bothered him was self-destruction. So death wasn't really that scary. Well, there were regrets about not asking out that lively girl from the apartment next door, about his loans which he hadn't managed to repay, and about his internet history which he hadn't remembered to clean. Well, I guess Murphy's Law rears its ugly head. Maybe he wasn't as ready as he was thinking, but it wasn't the past. He would somehow ferry over to whatever afterlife awaited. Why afterlife? He didn't believe in any religious crap that he had fed from morning to night. Working with machines made him decentralized to such ideas. Still, still the facts were really easily to recognize. Here he was, floating above the meat bag that was his former body, waiting for something to happen. Now that he looked over himself, it seemed that while he looked rather okay in the mirror, or on a lower scale of okay, but still, in reality, his face, and especially his body, was really neglected. It was all too late though. And for a long time, nothing happened. After getting a bit worried, he tried to float away, up at first, thinking about heaven, and then down, just to escape this limbo. But quickly understood that he was bound to this place of death. What's worse, that his body started to smell and rot. Telephones kept coming to life a few times, until its battery died. I'm pretty sure that these were calls from work. I'm still on no speaking terms with my family. Well, was. I'm pretty sure that there will be no getting back into the rotten flesh unless I get turned into a zombie. He smirked, even though the situation was not funny at all. But that was how he always was. Slow, but easily adaptable. Maybe lazy was a better word. It was about after a week that he passed away that his neighbors connected the dots and called the police and ambulance. Some shouting and knocking on his door later and his home was broken into and the desiccated and rotting body discovered. He floated around, taking in the various horrified expressions, even the young policeman who ran to empty his contents of his stomach. It didn't really register. After all, he spent a lot of time locked in with a corpse, even if it was his own body lying there. As he looked over, and the paramedics came in and lifted him delicately onto the stretcher. Then, after covering up with a cloth and slowly left the room, he followed the procession and promptly bumped his head against an invisible barrier that blocked him from leaving the former home. Contrary to his expectations, it wasn't really that unnerving. Shouldn't he be more... Uh, worried? Something smells here, and it isn't my body, he joked to himself. First time in a week that speaking out loud. Well, speaking was a big word, without vocal cords, lungs, and all that jazz. This was more like VR simulation, which he was reading about. To his mild surprise, somebody answered. Oh, so you really weren't one of the lost. Crap, and I make things complicated. The voice was neither young nor old. It did lack tension that he associated with machines, but also something more. Ha, huh, who are you? Maybe what should be the better question? He asked, sizing up the wisp of flight floating near his waist. Yet, it was a being completely on its own world. Process of dissipation has already begun. They really effed up upstairs, huh? With a sense of schadenfreude, it swayed around, bobbing in what seemed to be anger. I told him, the chances are high enough. Send somebody, but no, we don't have enough resources. It's like a 5% gamble. Bureaucrats. He huffed in annoyance. Um, sorry? Yes, I'm thinking, don't disturb me, vessel. Maybe just a question or two. I'm pretty lost right now. 
Ha <laughs> ha, lost you say. For this pun, yet alone you can ask. The answers are another thing altogether though. Wow, what a dick. And he thought that he decided to take a chance. Then, what's going to happen to me and who are you? Ha, huh, still quite attached to your mortality. I really was thinking that a person like you wouldn't care. The strangest things, it murmured, but stopped seeing the expression. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's your own welcome back at anyway. Even if somebody upstairs effed up. It murmured in the last sentence, and quietly enough it escaped its ears. Maybe never meant to do it. What? he asked Dunch committally. To tell the truth, it wasn't that big of a deal. Okay, so the short version. After death, all souls which survive the ordeal and understand that not many of them do to the shock of being pretty big are collected and sent into the cycle of reincarnation on earth, all just made into angels or demons or other more kinky things. And there are procedures for that and it is likely that somebody frecked up your holes. So it's a bureaucratic error, he asked incredulously, and it was ridiculous enough to break even through his apathy. Yeah, you can call it that, the wisp of lights visibly deflated. So why aren't you fixing it? This question struck the being after a minute in silence, and it responded in a serious tone. It's not that easy. Well, you see, we collect souls, so-called vessels, fast not because we love perfection, but because they turn useless after some time. Evil ghosts, poltergeists, physicians, let's just say they're not completely unreal. If I had a body, I would be sweating, yet somehow I don't really care. He answered while looking at the floating wisp. Yep, those are the first symptoms. Apathy, dissipation of care of the mortal bonds. At least you're not crying or raging kind. Thank the divines for the small favours. So, what now? We get creative, of course. While well, such a soul can't really be used in our system, it is only when considering normal reincarnation. I need to make a few calls. Please wait. The wisp stopped looking at him and his white light turned a bit grey. It slurred some words which seemed to be a greeting in multiple languages. Some seemed even outside the human ability to hear. Well, I'm not human anymore, so why do I care? After half an hour, the wisp's tone started to sound more and more strained. In the end, it answered somebody with a clear and gratitude and ended the call. Okay, it's not a big deal, but there is a small god's constellation where they can use you. Sorry, I can't get anything better. So what's the gig? He asked, not thrilled at all. Dungeon call on one of the planets. I'll be honest with you, the gods out there are pretty much screwed both themselves and the inhabitants. It's slowly getting towards the apocalyptic proportions, with two magical walls pretty much mutating most of the flora and fauna, and sentient graces going crazy on each other. The voice trailed off in the end. Two questions, how does that affect me, and are there no other options? Yep, there aren't that many things that a vessel of your quality, dissipation, state can even do. And dungeon calls are pretty much on the low end anyway. There was something like a sigh. Dungeons are used for two purposes. To filter out the manor in the atmosphere, and to give resources to the sentience of the world. As such, you're supposed to help them survive and grow. Maybe even save the planet, he added with a tiny voice. I guess there isn't much choice, he mumbled to himself, deliberately letting himself be heard. No need for hesitation. Send me in, Captain. Yes, thank you for your cooperation. I hope that after your call we'll get destroyed and you will choose to use our company again. The wisp bobbed up and down, reciting a formula. Some of the words poked the last embers of curiosity, but the young man's spirit only managed to scream for a moment, What do you mean? Before getting sucked into the black hole. At least this one was reasonable. It was worth a few calls. At least there isn't any mark on my spotless record. Pindal Solomon of the Fallen Angels, what are you doing here? Another voice breaks the silence, but only a low laugh answers it, echoing. In the meantime, the future dungeon call has been transported away from Earth and is screaming in his mind, Fah! I never ask for the name on this planet, and there will be a tutorial, right? And maybe some hot chick fairy, like in the light novels, right? But there was only silence. End of chapter. The Forgotten Dungeon, Chapter 2, Dungeon Call With an audible pop, I was spat out from the maelstrom and consumed me on earth. The wisp-like thing really did a number on me. Even my human-like body was torn to shreds, and I was now looking nothing like before. I was now a slightly more blue wisp of energy, floating on the wind, 
The sensation only lasted for a moment, though, and a voice boomed close to my proximity, paralyzing my new senses. What do we have here? It mused. Another package from a foreign world. Strange. Such a backwater system, and there is still somebody who remembers. Anyway, what are you? The excitement was nearly visible, as was the large sphere of floating in front of me. To reiterate, I was a small wisp of bluish light floating in the air. My size was no bigger than a dinner plate. And the being next to me was similar, except larger, much larger. Elephant or walrus category larger in my poor little dinner plate. I could only hope that it wasn't hungry. What did I do in response? Fight, fight, right? The ancient coping mechanism. Nope. My true and trusted reaction was to keep my mouth shut and do not make eye contact and wait it out. Like a small animal under the predator's gaze, it worked somehow and the being sighed. Another piece of subpar goods, it seems. Dissolved soul to be put into a dungeon core, Jim. <sighs> I can't even speak. I was hoping for a hero or a saint soul. Divinity knows we need them here. There was another pause. Well... Nothing I can do about it. Begin the procedure, it commanded, into the ether. And surprisingly, our surroundings responded from the black mist. A robotic voice answered with a mechanical precision. Seeding module ready. Compatible source vessel detected. Begin. Yes, authorized seeding. Authority checking. Authority confirmed. Guide of stars and science, Brighton. Checking available locations on Yana. Installing soul guiding system. A slight itch came over my body as I twitched into displeasure. Brighton's eyes focused on me once again, at least that's the way it felt, seeing as though it didn't have any. The voice continued, installation complete, checking compatibility, none found, forcefully creating compatibility. Anima, compatibility was created. Oh, now that's rare, maybe something good will come out of this after all. Searching for available locations, no locations found, converting existing location. That's right, it's like the 600 core that I would be able to to plant onto the soil of Yana. The non-corrupted landmass has its limits, but that means the first time the unease was heard in the god's voice. Rune castle of Henrik Walzer found compatible. No, 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 abort, abort. Panic was now clearly heard in Brighton's voice, but his orders fell in deaf ears. Whatever being was dragging me down to earth below promptly ignored him. Location confirmed seeding. My whole being was sucked down into a black onyx crystal buried in the dirt and debris. It was like a roller coaster, but without the safety harness, and I would promptly discharge the contents of my stomach, if I had any inside, or had a stomach at all, or a mouth, yep. It was still very nauseating, even for a simple soul. And there was a box, floating before me, taunting. Welcome to Yana, your race has been changed to Dungeon Core, your affinity has been changed to none, your starting element has been changed to Anima, and your location has been changed to Henrik Walser Groon Castle Dungeons. Your name has been changed to Uno. As it always seemed, life decided to grant me lemons, and it was time to make lemonade. Only how? Brighton. I think I made a mistake. Well, it's not like there are many of my fellow gods left anymore, so I won't be admonished. But still, it doesn't sit well with me. It just simply doesn't. I've got to do something. First, check where that soul came from. Earth, where is that? Oh, and the white dog duality, non-magical world, non-magical beings, and a lesser amount of willpower and luck. Completely unremarkable. I still don't understand. Then maybe the sender is the key. Padiel Solomon, the fallen angels. What the hell? What is one of the big guys doing swindling an innocent random soul to become a dungeon core? There has to be something more after Padiel is known for his perfectionism. But if it's a piece of information, maybe I can deal with some of the angels or demons from that dimension. Who knows? It'll take some time, though. Then, let's make sure that the dungeon is going all right. There should be a, uh, tutorial, uh, ready? What the hell is this? Why can't I access the system? Oh, it is only when it comes to Uno and his dungeon. Wait, did he name himself? To simply dissolve soul doesn't have such strength of will. Nor does it care about names. It's getting more and more complicated. I'm sure hope that it won't affect our other plans. Maybe I should send some of my followers near it. But it's on the edge of the known territories. There won't be many people in the area, not even counting my or the other gods following. Maybe I can just let it be. 
It will be years before the dungeon will grow strong enough to arrive near the territories of sentient races. Not even taking into consideration that it would have to battle corruption all the way through. And with the anima element, wasn't that like a spirit magic or shamanistic rituals? This wasn't exactly his cup of tea. Magic was less regulated than science. But then again, what could the core even do without normal animals? I might have doomed it already. It left a bit of taste in his mouth. Despite being one of the younger gods, he always already scrapped with many responsibilities. At least with the current pace, the world would end in a few hundred years and they could all rest, thinking about what went wrong this time. Maybe I can go ask Mirabella, as the goddess of luck and chance. She could get a better glimpse, but then talking her to her was grating. I'll just let it go. And so Brighton continued to panic like a headless chicken, and Uno was waiting in the darkness. End of chapter. The Forgotten Dungeon, Chapter 3 Uno. It was dark and cramped. Truth be told, it wasn't worse than one of my old apartments. But still, this was some seriously creepy stuff. I've heard of sensory deprivation chambers, and the space inside me seemed just like it. Yes, inside me. When falling, I had a glimpse of the surroundings, and I noticed that my soul had landed in some kind of basement, and into this largest round onyx, only five centimeters in diameter, and it looked completely unremarkable, just like me in another life. It was a bit fattish on the edges, too. Was this harassment? Were my physical features converted into an unliving stone only to make me fat again? No, no, calm down. This is stress talking. How did they say it in those survival shows that were on TV? Remain calm, take in your surroundings, plan your next move. There is no planning. I am pretty sure that I'm underground, but this darkness screams of the I'm blind type and not the it's too dark type. And so there is not much more that I can do other than waiting, and maybe, just maybe, some kind of tutorial or special being will talk to me to explain what I can do. No? Fine then. I'll just wait. And wait. Wait. I can't sleep, so it's not really fun. But I'll wait. And wait. I'll wait for you. Wait. Wait. No, seriously, I'll wait. There is no sense of passing time in this endless blackness. But sure, I get creeped out. Was it minutes, hours, days, weeks, months? Our dungeon calls immortal. Do we not die even when we are killed? Well, I wilt in the darkness before anything happens. Or maybe it's happening, but I simply can't react to it. Stupid questions. Sure, I can't start counting sheep or do some mental gymnastics, but it's all for naught. I can't feel, I can't see, I can't hear, and I can't taste, and I can't smell. Are these all the senses? What about the mystical sixth sense, then? If I'm too cut off from my surroundings... Stretching out mentally, I tried to focus, but how to do something that was simply beyond my understanding? Do I cramp up and trying to push out the magic? Or does the super sane way of screaming at things work? I would leave the question of how do I push out something or scream without having the body parts alone. There are also always available mumbo jumbo of spirituality, high nations, wink wink, and with shaman like motions and drugs. Sadly, no drugs for me. But I could always meditate and stuff. If I could only sleep here. But no, this has to be a high caffeine induced dungeon core experience. What if, just if, dungeon calls can't sleep? Gasp! <laughs> no longer being able to laze around while eating chips and fur. I mean, enjoying the culture. And then going into slumber. <sighs> Damn, it feels like my emotions are returning. All of them at the same time. But still, they're back. I won't be desiccated shell of a person. Only a smallish Super Saiyan gem. Yeah. It was time to scream. Brighton. Inviting himself to Mirabella's divine realm was always a pain. Not only was his cloud-like figure dissipating to create an image of a long-haired elder with large glasses and his nose, but instead of a floating, he had to walk. Walk! Like a mortal! But instead of huffing, he only hugged tightly the leather-bound book and somehow appeared in his hands and continued his journey. Unlike his own realm, empty and raw, Mirabella had made sure that her surroundings looked rich and as artistic, and a grand palace with marble walls covered in paintings, reliefs, and statues. 
all made from precious materials and created by grandmasters. The opulence, but it was not too much. Not by the dilettante nouveau rich desire, but by a caring hand and a real connoisseur. Along with the precious halls, young mortals wandered, boys and girls covered only in thin clothing. In truth, they were spirits, amalgamations of world bound to Mirabelle's realm, and created only to serve her. They murmured as Brighton walked forward, while well, not daring to stop him. Only when he entered the palace and sought the largest, most oppressive door did one of them step forward and ask with a slight frown, Hello, Master Brighton. May I ask what do you need from our mother? She is quite busy at the moment. His body trembled a bit, but knowing consciously that this was a foreign god wouldn't hurt him, and did miracles for his courage. There is a development in Yara, he answered patiently. Mirabella's expertise is needed. Any more concrete information is only for her ears. I understand, but still I cannot. The words trailed off as he moved his long ears to hear something, that only inaudible to him. Yes, yes, right away, master. He opened his now blue eyes almost immediately and stared at the man standing before him. With the white hair of the spirit danced and invisible winds, and when a few moments passed, I, he spoke at last. The possession took place already, and both the demeanor and tone changed a lot. I will be ready in a moment, Brighty. I too felt something, so don't worry your pretty little head about it. I see, answered Brighton. It was a heartfelt relief that he wouldn't be barging into his companion's inner realm. Knowing her hobbies, it would probably see something that he wouldn't be able to unsee, and most importantly, Hanger Mirabella. They were equals, it was true, it was true, but still didn't allow them to break some barriers of conventionality, and being polite was something that he tried his best at. As God of Science was musing while staring dumbly at the wall, the person he was thinking about, the Goddess of Luck, was just getting out of bed, and she wasn't alone there. There were companions weren't moving in state. Not just yet, anyway. Taking in the sights and smells, she waited for a moment before materializing to see through pink robe, which accentuated her well-shaped breasts, small waist, and long legs. Her face also seemed more like a doll, so perfect that it was clearly inhuman. Bright blue eyes and deep violet hair complemented the rest of her form. It took only a minute or two to move out of her inner space. She appeared from thin air right next to Brighton. Hello there. It was ages since you managed to take a few steps into my realm. She smiled while hugging him. His awkward reaction was cute, and she wasn't sure it was because he reacted to her, or maybe how he didn't really use corporeal forms anymore. Still, her bright smile remained. So, what brings you, our most diligent god, under the sun to my part of the realm? She asked, still full of smiles, and Brighton took a deep sniff and sighed. This was another reason why he disliked walking into Mirabelle's world. It was so impure. You should know by now, he huffed in annoyance. There was a variable brought by another world, by a fallen angel, no less. This put a damper on the goddess's teething. Only for a moment, though. She concentrated on the world, growing slower and less vibrant, lest something essential was being sucked out of the surroundings. In a sense, it was. After draining mana for a few minutes and her little companions started escaping, they were used to these trances, but this one was longer and much more dangerous than anything that they'd seen up until that date. And they weren't careful, they only dried up and husks would remain. And then it ended. There was no mana draining monster anymore, but a sensual young lady with a brilliant smile. How interesting, she exclaimed while jumping up and down in place. Her large globes followed. Now, Brighty, a question for you. Have you handled a foreign soul before? Uh, no. The god in question gulped. Are they somehow different from natives? Ha! Ah, so you kind of assume that everything will be the same nonetheless. Isn't that quite reckless, my dear? Her smile was now in full bloom, and it was even more inhuman. Perfectly white teeth and full crimson stained lips. And yet the male god was feeling some kind of anger behind it. I'm sorry, he bowed immediately. I'll repent, I promise. But right now, we must save the core. It was sent by the Badlands without any instructions, and it would starve right away. And I have to give it a chance, Brighton screamed while frantically waving his hands. Normally, he would never fall so low. But right now, there was the lives on the line, so his dignity was secondary. Please help me. Of course I will help. You silly god, Mirabella laughed loudly, her anger hidden. 
This is this and that is that. Now, since it's a foreign entity, we need to circumvent the system a bit to get a special connection. Something like a scrying orb, but linked towards one place. Her pretty brows scrunched up. Now, let's check this and connect through the manor field to get another, she mumbled to herself for a long while and weaved her hands around, leaving blue lines in the air. Her little minions gathered back, watching the spectacle. Living in Mirabella's realm was anything but boring. It was true, and their lives could be in jeopardy any, any second, and this happened nearly daily. But it was worth it. What more did they know about living? They were stuck in this world anyway. And it was a few days, but gods, unlike mortals, were patient creatures. By the end, Mirabella had covered in sweat, accentuating her voluptuous figure. At least Brighton grew used to his form and squirmed much less. And he even managed to create some kind of manor circuit, remotely completing most of his work. True, he could leave and return only when she finished, but his intuition screamed loudly enough to reconsider such a course of action. So he did. Gleaming mirror formed in an empty space, and it was about two meters high, edges made out of live manner, and trembling under the touch of the goddess's realm compressed energy. It formed a perfect window into a place where the dungeon core was dumped in. They peered forward, expecting to see a starving and feeble crystal buried in the dirt, only to be greeted by a shocking sight of a few already dug out rooms and a strange things roaming between them with purpose. Mirabella started laughing with a shrill voice. <laughs> What is that? This is just too good to be true. Did you pick up a little genius, Brighty? She mocked. God of science had other problems, though. What is this? He looked closer at one of the roaming beings. Wait, you can do that? He screamed while flattening his face in the mirror. The target of his scrutiny was simply trotted forward while wobbling dangerously. That wasn't the problem. What was the problem was the fact that it was dead. No, it was never alive in the first place. Even now, and yet it knew how to move, work and think in the most basic of levels. And it was held together by a manner which looked suspiciously like duct tape. Not that either of the two gods knew what that was. End of chapter. The Forgotten Dungeon, chapter 4. Uno a few days earlier. So, yeah. Plan, I have no mouth and must scream, has ended in failure. I was clearly not a super saiyan world. No blonde hair, no monkey tail. I'm not even thinking about how ridiculous it would look to be an onyx gemstone or that my body was turned into. This operation ended badly, not for the lack of trying though, because I felt something. Ground, to be more precise. Yep, I've fallen down from somewhere to somewhere. Progress. It's time to try another method. Dumb repetition? Maybe. But there isn't much to do anyway, so why not? Let's just say that pushing out magic didn't work too well. And I don't want to talk about it. After another failure, I've moved towards new goals, or rather magic systems I remembered from the different games and media. I was tiring, and I didn't even know that I could get tired. After all, this body was now an unliving piece of earth. Well, maybe not completely unliving, but still. So there was a short and Aztec blood sacrifices, but there was no victim willing or not, or a virgin for that matter. I couldn't even bleed myself. Scratch that. Maybe voodoo? But how? Without drugs, and I'm all out of bodies to use, so no zombies then. Chanting some Indian spells? Once again, silence was the answer. Witchcraft. Where would I, once again, find the ingredients and more importantly a place to carve my sigils in? Summoning? I didn't remember any lesser devil names, and getting somebody like Lucifer and the other grand powerful demons was out of the question, especially because I now understood that they were most likely real and possibly fatal to a little gem like me. Maybe after I grow bigger, if I will. This took some time, but I tried every single trick in the book, and now I was at my wit's end. Nothing worked. I mean, nothing. Even tried some Viking-like ancestor summoning, a new age bullcrap. Maybe my ancestors were just too timid, and there were no heroes in my family tree. Bite me. And so, no, zero, and in desperation, I decided to be stupid. Status, I thought. Having no mouth is really a handful. But lo and behold, it worked. Name Uno, race, dungeon core, affinity, none, element, anima, location, Henrik Walther, ruin, castle, dungeons, magic, none, skills, none, innate abilities, mana sight, mana levels, full. Seeing the blue box once again, I made up my mind. 
I'm going to be stupid and that was a way to deliver it, and I'll just do that. Menace sight, I mind whispered and then saw everything. Which meant that I could recognize that I was lying on the floor in a small half-buried room with a skeleton chained to the wall and parts of the ruined table and chair from which I undoubtedly fell. It was a small place and not even big enough for an adult human to stand up. But for a dungeon core like me, it was perfect. Safe for once. Unless there were some worms and other weird creatures in this world that would enjoy a crunchy texture of gems. No, don't jinx it, Uno. Weird. The first time I referred to myself by my new name. Ha! Huh. So human beings can get used to anything. Interesting. But now, how do I describe my newfound power? It was like echolocation. Mana goes out, mana bounces from the wall, dirt, all that rat, and mana goes back, and I know everything. Wait, rat? What the hell is that? This place was sealed just a moment ago, and how is that rat inside? With a quick scan of my surroundings, I get a closer look at both the being and its way of entrance. To put it simply, it dug a tunnel through the dirt. To put it a bit more complicated way, it was no simple rat. While it was big as a soccer ball, which would by itself elicit some screams of horror from many women I know, it was also so damn big claws and comically oversized front teeth. It's like a mole crossbreed with a rabbit and a rat. The greyish fur covered most of its body, and it seemed rather tough too. Clearly, this creature was made in a way to ensure survival in some damn dangerous places. That's bad. Maybe the city god who sent me here was panicking because of that. But now this means the chance of me surviving is min- Ow! Why are you eating me? I'm a freaking gem. You won't get full nibbling on me. You damn rat- Ah! It hurts! It hurts! I was only hurt like that once, and the damn heater malfunctioned like trying to repair it, and I was electrocuted. Ow! It felt just like this. Bzzzt. Huh. I scanned the room once again, and Mole Rat, let's call it that for right now, was lying on the floor, twitching. Its chest raised slowly and slower, and then simply stopped. And so another blue box appeared. Congratulations, new tribute has been created, dungeon core level. Your dungeon core level has been changed to zero. New innate ability has been added, anima manipulation. New innate ability has been added, dungeon creation. Was I teleported to some virtual reality? Was with this world and its freaking video game logic? I was reading from the pain, but noticed that my surface was untouched. It seems like I was one sturdy gem. Just please... Please, I hope that the pain was not losing me HP. To turn away from reality, I started to wonder even more about the rules of this world. By earlier demonstrated logic, I still can't stand how irrational it is. There should be a few actions that could be taken right now. To summarize, killing gains me something. Let's be in the true gaming fashion, call it experience. By getting it, I'll grow stronger, level up, and that is much as clear. And there are some weird things, like how did I generate electricity that killed the rat? Or why is it wasn't working before? Why skill or magic ability wasn't added when I worked? What is anima manipulation, and what is damn anima itself? Hmm, to answer the last question, I think I remember something about that at least. There were some psychological shows I watched. Again, the science channel was my all-time favorite. And there was something about that word. Was it Greek in origin? Roman? I don't remember. But it was about inner truth, I think, or getting to the truth. Yet, what was such a truth if not preconception? Bah, before I get too philosophical, what does it do and how do I use it? Think Uno, think video game logic. Okay, let's be stupid once again. Activate anima manipulation. Boom! Wow, it's so weird, it's impressive. So, the call are my powers, I need to express them? Something happened, and this was a sense of power going through me. I knew that I could create, give life and force my own truth on the universe. So, of course, I did. Started the creation of my first minion. There wasn't much to ground for me to choose from, so I decided in my delusion to create a, as God did in the Bible, by using dirt and maybe a little bit of wood and iron which were just lying around, courtesy of a broken down jail bars and wooden furniture. The main body was made from dirt and pieces of stone mixed in. The same was done for the head, and these weren't really important. The arms and legs were created with wooden reinforcement with small pieces of iron. In all honesty, they looked like little simple sticks. 
but most of it was used on the left one to create a shovel-like appendage. I didn't have the ability to heat up metals, but stacking sharp parts of it next to each other created enough space to both dig with it and carry some material. Second hand on three fingers made from iron which gave the creatures ability to grasp, albeit on a basic level. Legs were made from wood with circular feet looking like small plates. It was finished and I looked at it in pride. The act of creating something, however ugly and DIY looking, was always one of the best parts. And as soon as I stopped pouring my mana into it, it simply fell apart. Ha! Huh. Why? No, no! I won't be defeated. Video game logic, video game logic. My chant worked like a self-hypnosis. I sculpted, connecting various parts together, and being was turned into nothingness almost immediately. And again. And again. But it wasn't a one-sided fight. I was learning. When I squinted my eyes enough, yes, I know, quite hard without eyes, it seemed like there were parts of energy flowing away from my gem, the core if you like, and reinforcing my creation. Only they dissipated the moment I took my attention away. They reminded me of glue used to keep parts together, yet I was firmly in the duct tape camp, using it and the varieties in both of my private life and working life, and there was nothing that couldn't be held together by it. What duct tape joined let man not disconnect or so. So why not? I started using my mental duct tape on a future minion and getting more and more parts together. It took me some time, but with patience, dirt and human stood before me. In one piece, even when I took my mana back. It wasn't moving, so I tried my next trope. If ability calling worked on other things, then what about... Analyze. Anima glue dirt drone. Dungeon Drone made of inferior materials by a young, experienced Dungeon Core. It has basically ability to move, function, excavate and transport and attack. It also first of its kind, both in the dungeon and on Yana. Because of the ingenious use of anima magic and bonding agent, drones are incapable of moving outside the limits of the Dungeon Core's influence that spawned them. It worked! And that explains why a drone of mine cannot move. There was something in early announcements about creating a dungeon, right? Status. Race Dungeon Core, name Uno, Dungeon Core level 0, Affinity None, Element Anima, Location Henrik Walzer Ruined Castle Dungeons, Magic None, Skills None, Innate Abilities, Mana Sight, Anima Manipulation, and Dungeon Creation. Oh yep, here it is, let's do it like before. Dungeon Creation. Congratulations, unnamed dungeon has been created. Innate Ability has been lost, Dungeon Creation. Hey, that's not fair, I worked hard for that. Well, maybe not, but it was mine nonetheless. Wh what? Why do I feel so, so tired, tired? Good night. Wait, I thought that I couldn't sleep. Ah, who cares? Sweet dreams. Congratulations, unnamed basic drone chassis have been created. Drone production will commence. Room creation will commence. Materials desolation will commence. Now. End of chapter. Forgotten Dungeon, Chapter 5. I was sleeping soundly for the first time in what felt like years, and there was nothing deeply and enjoyable about the soundless abyss. That's why I was quite pissed when I words working me up were so rude. What is this? The voice of a middle-aged man sounded, and then a really, really loud shout that followed. Wait! You can do that? Somebody is trying to sleep here. I grumbled, speaking in the same way that I had used to activate abilities. Somehow, it worked, and the being responded. You can hear me. Mirabella. Arrgh. It's so much looking like an ancient divine being. He grumbled too. Wait, I know that voice. Brighton, I probed. Ah, so you remember me. Good. Why weren't you talking earlier? I was sent to your world without much warning, you know. Ah, as expected of Pytel, ruthless. The guards sighed with remorse. I too wasn't the best host, if only I knew. But there isn't much that I can do right now. Maybe just offer you an apology. I'm sorry for asking, but aren't you, you know, a god? There shouldn't be any things that you can't do, I asked, thinking about how complicated it was starting to be. Normally, yes, but you see, Yana is a bit different in that regard. His voice slowed down, and I just knew that there was going to be more on the topic. Like, what? You see, he started talking unwillingly, only to be interrupted by a much younger, lighter voice. Oh, let me explain. You and your useless pride. Bah! After berating Brighton, the voice continued. I'm called Mirabella, and I'm a goddess of luck and chance. Nice to meet you, youngling core. Hello? 
I answered weakly, and the intrusion on our conversation, howdy. And to continue our discussion, you see, some time ago, thousands of years in the past, the natives of this planet pretty much effed everything up during the magical war. Mirabel, language, the voice from the background screamed in indignation. Don't be so stiff. We're all adults here. I could sense a wide smile through these words. By meddling with powers that they didn't understand, they pretty much all of the planet's manner was thrown into chaos. Children were born with horrible mutations, and the flora and fauna faced near extinction, and then they grew madly aggressive. Normal magic stopped working, and that's kind of bad. I see. Yep. Just like the people on our planet, though that would happen after a nuclear holocaust. Well, maybe without the magic part. Everything was in chaos. Stabilizing both the planet and the inhabitants took a lot from us. And there were more gods than now. And when we were thinking that Yana was on its way to recuperating, they did it again. I'm sorry? They effing magically nuked their planet again. So, little Cole, you're now on a planet sliding down in a one-way ride to hell. Most of the gods were so pissed that they simply left the planet, searching for... Uh, other job opportunities. I briefly wondered what were job opportunities for a god. So now we're stuck seeding dungeons and trying to use them to both cull the number of sentients and get them strong enough to stop this madness, and preferably reclaim the territories known as the Badlands. We established this system to take care of the sapiens and help them fight against the beasts, and most importantly, stop and spread the corruption, which turned out better than expected. Sadly, it cuts down on our power and ability to intervene. Okay, what are the Badlands? It's the place where you are, and the borders of it anyway. Full of mutated creatures and mad, desperate people who hunt them, or just try to eke out a living. Living here is better than starving in the bigger cities, or dying in the blood clan walls. Or worse, race walls. And what can I do? A few hundred years ago I would have said help us, now just survive. Not that you created your dungeon both mutated creatures and surrounding people will find you. It is only a matter of time. After all, your manor is clean and tasty, and it's like an oasis in the desert. Damn. Then I'll change my question. What should I do? Show your defenses, kill invaders, be it beast or man, and survive. Her oh, voice quietened for a moment. We're nearly out of time. Any tips? I asked hopefully. I can see that you're a bit stuck. If you all stand by us in the end, some of mine or Brighty's priests will contact you, and hopefully help you also. Also, remember that your mana manipulation isn't limited to innate abilities, but I don't have access to other skills. Duh, maybe people down here have already forgotten this, but this system is only a crutch, nothing more. She laughed at the end of whatever they were going to use as communication ran out of gas. I turned on my menace sight and I trembled. What the hell is that and why are there more of you? Ha 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 It was so nice. Such a naive little call. Now only to make sure that it survives in a few decades. And it will be ripe for the harvest. Lovely. Maybe she won't have to leave this planet after all. At least it could add a few hundred years to this planet's lifespan. And such provide her with more opportunities. And she was planning on wandering out loud. An obnoxious voice entered the goddess's ears. Mirabella, what were you thinking? Brighton shouted, always much too proper and inflexible. If this core, no, this person stays in Yana, it'll no doubt be harvested or even corrupted. Isn't it why we were not sending any truly sentient souls to act as dungeons? His fury was clear. Now, how to pacify him? Yes, of course, the fabled greater good trick. The chance was already lost. As a foreign being, there is no way to get him out. And so we need to bet on his resilience. Besides, she lowered her voice, hissing like a snake. Did you take a good look at those constructs of his? I did, but I still don't understand how. It doesn't matter how, she interrupted, joining their bodies together. There was a need to distract him. Brighty was weak under pressure after all. His creations would be able to survive in the Badlands unimpeded. What's more, sentience may learn how to create them. And she closed in and whispered deviously. And most importantly, they can, in time, gain sentience. And then there will be a whole race of corruption-resistant beings which can once again colonize the planet. Her laugh was overwhelmingly loud. Spirits surrounding them had already hid, and they knew that laugh. But his soul could be lost forever. He could get harvested, or worse. 
God of science still had objections, and the last vestiges of his integrity, but the voice of reason was quieter and quieter still. It's for the greater good, brother. Maribella took out the heavy guns. What worth has one future when it can't save the whole world? And us, she added, in the depths of her mind. Brighton was clearly hesitating, so she finished. Besides, he was sent here by a fallen angel. Smuggled, even. Do you think that anybody but demons tracks such transactions? We're safe. Yes, you're right. What's worth one sentient? When the fate of the world is in peril? Strength returned to Brighton's eyes. Yep, I got a rest. This mirror thing took a lot out of me. She smiled again, and in time much sweeter than before. I won't stop you then. Rest well, sister. With a slight bow, Brighton left his realm. After she was sure that he wasn't going to come back, she laughed, and laughed and laughed and laughed. Spirits were trembling. Uno. Calm like an effing leaf on the wind. I need calm. There were now five of these drones, waltzing around the place, looking for something to do. How did they even get you? I have no idea, and I simply spawned when I wasn't looking. To tell the truth, when I was sleeping after creating my dungeon. At least, they kind of shine when hard work is involved. These guys don't tire, and they don't nag me about things. On the downside, they were totally and utterly stupid and stubborn, like rocks given the souls. I guess they kind of are? Under my watchful analyze, their structure was shown as the same rock duct tape combination as the first one. Truth be told, I can't even differentiate which one I created first. At least under the watch, the four rooms were fully excavated and prepared for further usage. And I mean for real. Like somebody licked the floor clean. And also, every iron bar, piece of wood and furniture, or some random odds and ends were somehow absorbed. When I focused hard enough, I could feel them. Blueprint-like explanations of meaty material in odds. Curiously, the skeletons dotting the place were still left alone and the raging cleaners. Right now, all the space that I had available underground wasn't really that big. From the still collapsed entrance of a small tunnel was running ahead only a branch out after five meters to the left and right, and in both cases there was a small room, with two cubic meters of empty space inside. Continuing ahead after three or more meters, the tunnel ended with uh, once again two branching rooms. In the right one, my onyx core was lying on the floor, and these two were also about two cubic meters, and I stood bare. The small but cozy dungeon, I guess. Or it would be if not for the veritable rat invasion. They were streaming in one after another, digging through the soft dirt and collapsing the entrance that the room that I was in. Clearly something lured them in, and the first one was only the beginning. At least my drones were useful for something. Their grass was squeezing the invaders to death, and shovel-like arms cutting off their heads. What's more, I was able to absorb their bodies, learning how that they were made. Blueprints again. And thanks to that I learned that they weren't called mole rats, but simply grey rats. Grey rat, small mutated critter common to the Badlands. They serve as a source of nutrition for pretty much every predator and even some desperate sentience. Their meat is tasteless and stringy with a repulsive odor. Grey rats are omnivorous and sensitive to heightened concentrations of mana, especially those of non-corrupted kind. They are named after their fur color and as used large fangs and teeth to fight against their foes. Not known magical affinity or special skills. Like most Badlands beasts, they contain an inner gland used for cleansing mana. Now wait a moment. Two things first. There is a threat level. That changes things, especially since my drones are threat level E. This was not much, just enough to take care of the rats, which in turn makes me stronger. But due to the lack of experience counter, I can't feel how close I am to leveling up. How could I have guessed that there would be a moment when I would miss these computer program installation bars? And secondly, mana conversion gland. Now isn't that interesting? I would have to get a bit butchery-like on it, but right now I had to do something even more important. To make myself some gods, and maybe some traps. End of chapter. And that concludes today's episode of The Forgotten Dungeon. I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the channel, there are numerous ways to do so, all of which are listed below. But the easiest way would be to collect forgotten souls, create new dungeons, and force them to like and subscribe my videos. Alright, I hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video.